Hey guys, what's up? This is False Bulls, one, two, three, and this is day... I have to always check because I'm an idiot. 33 of our quarantine vlogs. So, like I said, you know, I'm going to try to at least do 40 days the quarantine lasts that long. And if it lasts longer than that, I'm going to do a hell of a lot more. Just keep finding something to talk about, you know? I'm sure I can find something out there. I have a lot of shit, and I have a lot of words that can come out of my mouth all. <laughs> so... I want, I was thinking, like, you know, since I'm doing quarantine vlogs, I might as well, like, you know, like I said, actually experiment with vlogging, with the vlogging style, and do all sorts of things that I can, like, do for that. And so, this week, I came up with two kind of, like, um, just tags for sort of the two, like, you know, fields I want to play in the YouTube game. Because I have my, like, you know, normal vlogging, and I'll, like, you know, just chat, or do story times, or... An Ainley Ramble, you know, my usual shit. But I'm also, like, super into, like, you know, trying out BookTube, and I want to, like, start making videos like that. Now, obviously, if I'm going to put, like, you know, a ballpark on when I want to start, it's going to be sometime later this year, once I get, like, you know, my room just, like, a room. Because I basically have my bed here, and then everything else is still in boxes, or shoved in some quarter, and... Basically, everything besides this, like, one, like, camera angle is so messy, and I don't want to share it to you because I'm really embarrassed, but it is what it is. Basically, like, you know, sometime in October or November, like, maybe my one-year mark, I want to start doing booktube videos. And, like I said, I'm planning a quarantine wrap-up, but eventually, like, you know, sometime in October, I want to, like, you know, buy it another, like, you know, buy a new bookshelf transfer all of my books so they don't fit on my actual bookshelf anymore. And that way I can actually, like, you know, look at them without having to, like, literally take out half of the books just to get the ones in the back because they're, like, stacked too deep and underneath and on top, like, five feet and everything else, and it's just... It's a mess. So, basically, I wanted to, like, you know, this week I made two tags that were kind of just... For both of those. One of them is a vlogging tag where you just like do story time and the other one is a book tag that I made because I read this because I was like reading this article and it's just like why don't you make your own book tag like stop being a fucker and make some original content and I'm just like mm, that's the call out I needed in my life and so it is I will disclaim this that it is not my birthday but today we are doing a birthday tag isn't that fun I don't have a birthday hat or, like, any sort of, like, thing that can, like, you know, I can use as a prop for this. So, like, just imagine, like, you know, it's birthday time, bitch. <laughs> so, I came up with, let's see, I numbered them. Nine. I came up with nine questions that are all about birthdays. And if you want to do this tag, basically, you can just do them in... You could really do them in any order you wanted to, but I tried to arrange them so that there was a little bit of funsies with it. And so, first question, number one, is how old are you? How many birthdays have you had in your life? For me, the answer is 22. I'm 22 years old. I know I look like I'm, like, you know, 17, but I'm legally able to drink alcohol. <laughs> Imagine that. Okay, that one's easy, you know, and I don't know, you can always, like, you know, elaborate on that if you want. So, number two is, what is your favorite flavor of birthday cake? Now, this can be any cake in the world that you want. If you're really into chiffon cake, you can answer that. If you're like, I love chocolate chip ice cream cake with green frosting and five sprinkles exactly, that is a valid answer. Just, like, you know, what's your favorite flavor of cake? If you don't like cake, you know, what do you have on your birthday? Like, these are the questions that need to be answered. Now, my favorite flavor of birthday cake is German chocolate cake. I had it on one of my birthdays and I loved it. And I, just, I love chocolate cake. It's great. The German chocolate has that, like, little coconut, like, you know, filling in it. And that's tasty. Other favorite cake flavors will probably be... Carrot cake. I do love carrot cake. It's always delicious. And pink champagne cake. And I don't know if you guys, like, have had it. 
But, um, they sell it at one of the, um, markets in, like, my town. So, like, if you live in Medford, you've probably seen a pink champagne cake, but I don't know if it's, like, a local thing or if it's just, like, a normal everybody thing. So, yeah. Um, number... Question number three. Do you like party hats? Like, you know those, like, weird little triangle hats that people, like, pop on your head, like, when you're five and you're just like, I'm wearing a party hat because accessories, bitch? I love those. Like, I think those are, like, so much fun. I love the idea of holiday-specific head, like, headwear because I just love that stuff. Of course, I also like hats. So, I mean, maybe I'm biased. Um... Off topic, but one of my favorite hats that I ever owned was a hard hat. I was never a construction worker. I never needed any reason to own one. But I found one on the side of the road one time, and I'm just like, this is mine now. This is my prop. And, yeah. So I like birthday hats. I think they're cool. But do you, maybe you don't. Maybe you think they look like shit. Tell me in the comments. Okay, question number four. What is your opinion on party favors? You know, it's like... You go to a party, and, like, sometimes they give you, like, a little goodie bag for, like, visiting. Honestly, for me, like, I think they're fun, but I also, like, at the same time, contrary-wise, I think that's a lot of work to put on, like, you know, the party organizers. Do you think that other children deserve, like, prizes for going to a person's birthday party? Or is, like, cake the prize? Do you think, like, you know, it is required for someone to have party favors at a party? Like... These are, like, you know, real questions. I don't think so. I think if you want to have party favors at your party, that's a nice thing. You're being a really sweet person. But honestly, the kids can go fuck themselves. They get cake and ice cream. Like, yeah. Like, I didn't have party favors at my party, but that's because we didn't have, like, you know, that type of money. Anyway. Number five. Okay. So I'm just, like, trying to read this, and I'm really bad at life. Okay, here's a good one. What was your favorite birthday present you ever received? That one for me is pretty easy. My favorite birthday present I got on my 16th birthday party. And my dad, he was like reading this book on like chivalry and like raising your children to be good people or something. I don't know, it was like really boring. And so he like wanted to give me a bunch of like manly gifts because I was like coming into adulthood and I was like becoming a man and some other sort of like bullshit. And I'm just like, okay, cause like, I mean, that's fine. It's just like a quinceanera, but like I'm a dude and I don't know like what the, if there is a male equivalent of a quinceanera, quinceanera, I don't know how to pronounce it. I'm sorry, but like it was basically that, but much more westernized. And so he's just like, I'm just going to buy you, like, a bunch of manly shit because, like, you're becoming an adult and I want to, like, you know, support your adulthood. And I'm just like, that's pretty chill. Like, you know, it's like that, like, you know, 16 is an important, like, you know, year in a lot of cultures, age-wise. And so he bought me a few things. He bought me my... Oh, he bought me a really nice Bible, actually. Um, I know that sounds weird, but we were, like, in church a lot during the time. And so I actually... I actually, like, it was one of my favorite, like, you know... That's not my favorite, but it was a nice gift. It was, um, oh, what's the phrase? It was monogrammed, so it had, like, you know, my name embossed in it. It had this sort of, like, pleather, like, cover on it that was really slick. And it had, like, these little, um, gold, gilded, like, you know, pages. So you would look at the side, and it would be, like, all shimmery. I just love it because, like, you know, that made me feel very adultish Because before, I was mostly just reading, like, a new living version of... That was like, extreme kids teen bible or something that had pictures in it. And I'm just like, eh. But like, that version made me feel very grown up. It made me feel very serious about my religious practice. And that was nice. That's not my um, favorite present ever. The other thing he got me that year, and I believe I had a few other gifts besides that, but those were the two I remember. Possibly because the, the two that I actually know where they are in my room. And the other one was actually a multi-tool. If I remember correctly, it was um, Gerber, not Gerber, it was something like that, though. And basically, it had a bunch of, like, different s settings. A uh, multi tool is just, like, a Swiss army knife, basically. So it has, like, pliers, it has saw, it has, like, a little saw blade, it has, like, scissors, it has, like, a few other blades on it. It also has, like, you know, like, some weird-looking ball openers and screwdrivers. And I love that. Um, I still own it, and I take it with me every time I go on a trip anywhere. And I just love that because I had always 
I've never really been a pocket knife type person because I don't really kept that many things in my life, you know, for me to carry one around. But I love the idea of a multi-tool because it's a lot more, it has a lot more utility to it. Not usually what most people would use a pocket knife utility for, which I imagine is self-defense, but at least that's what I've always associated pocket knives with. But I just, I love the multi-tool. It was something that I wanted since I was like, you know, pretty young. And just being able to get that was actually really nice. It's one of my favorite gifts I ever received. And I still use it to this day. So, let's see. Moving on, we're going to go to question number... Question number six. And I have a good story for this one, too. What's your least favorite birthday present? So, we just talked about my favorite birthday present. But what's your least favorite? I also have a definitive answer for this. But if you don't, that's okay. My least favorite present, I think it was my 14th birthday party, but I'm mostly just pulling that number out of a hat. And that was also the one where we had the German chocolate cake. There was a really interesting gifting theme that year. Like, I love my parents, and I hate to say shit like this, because honestly, it is extremely rude. But really phoned it in. So that year, my parents told asked me, Hey, Ryan, just like really like, you know, just out of the blue, like what, a couple months before my birthday. Do you like Angry Birds? I'm just like, I mean, I guess I played it. Like, you know, it's like, it wasn't a bad game. It wasn't my favorite, you know? And so I think nothing of it because sometimes my parents just ask me weird questions like that. That's what parents do. That birthday year, I received literally almost nothing but Angry Birds merchandise. Which would have been fine if I was, like, you know, 10 and I was obsessed with Angry Birds. Because that's, like, an interest I could imagine, like, a 10-year-old, like, being really into. Or, like, 14 year olds being, like, really into Fortnite. I never was. But it's, like, I had, like, played Angry Birds, like, briefly on Facebook. Back when, like, Facebook games were, like, the biggest thing on the internet. So it's, like, I was not super into the intellectual property. That, however, once again, is not my least favorite present. The only other thing... I might have, like, received other presents besides that, but I mostly just remember, like, Angry Bird everything. I still have one of the um, shirts I got, which I liked because it was actually kind of cool, but the rest was just... Why did they buy me, like, Angry Bird slap bracelets? <laughs> I love my parents, but that was a strange thing to buy a child. <laughs> um, the only other thing they bought me was... A book, which, that works. I love books. I was quite an avid reader throughout my entire um, middle school, elementary school, and high school experience. So, that completely worked for me. Except, it was a sequel in a book series. It wasn't even the first book in the book series. I had never heard of the author. And the whole thing was, like, about wild mustangs. And I'm thinking... I'm not, like, you know, a sideways horse girl. Like, I literally could not give a bigger shit about horses. Like, and this is the sequel. So even if I read this book, what am I going to, like, get from it? I'm not going to know any of these characters. I'm not going to know why any of these horses are important. And I honestly don't remember if I ever, like, actually read it. And I got, like, so shitty for, like, saying this. But it was, like... It was like, my dad literally, like, went to the store and picked, like, a random book off the shelf. And I'm just like, that's okay, but, like, at least make sure that it's not a sequel. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Like, I always, like, hate saying, like, talking bad about guests because, like, you know, that's just rude. But it was just really not the best birthday present I got. <laughs> okay. Okay. Let's see. Number seven is another interesting one. So tell me about a birthday, so I'm, the next question is, talk about a birthday where the day was like, you know, kind of just terrible, it just was no good, you just felt kind of bland, and you're like, it's my birthday, happy me, but then like, you, you know, you got a birthday present, or somebody said something, and it really made your day. For me, I think it was my, I was pretty young at this point, so I'm going to say 12 or 13, somewhere around there. And I had just, like, you know, I went to school that day. We didn't really have a birthday party planned. I don't even know if there was cake. Like, I don't even think there was cake. And my parents, actually, they got me a Bible. And I know, like, a lot of my birthday parties, 
I apparently got a lot of Bibles as birthday gifts, but I only ever actually owned three and like, you know, my life as far as I can remember. And the reason why I liked it, because at the time I was very religious, I was very like, you know, I was going to church like three or four times a week and stuff. And so I was like actually really happy to get it because church was a big part of my life. And I actually really loved it because I had been reading like, you know, King James and I like King James. It's the version I prefer now that might just be my upbringing if I'm being honest. But I like that there was another translation up there because I could understand it. I could comprehend what I was reading. Because while I like sort of understood what King James was about, because I was a very good reader, even like, you know, back then, I still did not really comprehend a lot of it. Because it's old timey and it can be dull at times. Like if you're not like, you know, invested in the story. And so, being able to, like, actually read something that was made for me to comprehend easier, that was more modernized, is actually really nice, because I literally, and I think I signed for, like, you know, the first three books, I, I think I read Genesis, Deuteronomy, and Leviticus, like, in a couple months by that point, just because I could actually read the damn thing, and I'm just like, so this is what God, Jesus is about. Duh. A little side note, if I'm actually talking about how much of the, I have not read the entire Bible, I know, I'm like, you know, I ain't gonna say I'm a fake Christian because, like, I hardly go to church as it is. But it's like, I have read a good portion of the Old Testament and then, like, not enough of the New Testament. But it's a, like, it's a big book. It's like 2,000 pages. So, there's a lot, a lot of stuff to read and comprehend. I actually, like, I really enjoy reading it, like, for the most part when I actually do sit down to do it. Because there's a lot of really interesting stuff to think about and, like, you know, a lot of really interesting, like, analogies and parallels with our world. And there's a lot of people that they chose to, like, speak about in the Bible that just looks like, you know, something to, like, look at and notice. I'm going to get off of my proselytizing because this is not what the, um, tag is about. <laughs> but, yeah, I, just, I really enjoyed that present just because at the time it really, it was a really, like, thoughtful gift. And it also, like, you know, really helped me connect with something that I enjoyed and that I loved. And so that's great. So, let's see, um, number eight, we're moving on, is, what is your most memorable birthday party? This is a fun one, like, you're going to enjoy this. So, my most memorable birthday party was probably my 14th. I'm pretty sure it was my 14th, I remember I was a 7th grader in middle school. So, hopefully my math works out. Remember, once again, writers cannot do math, so I'm terrible at this. And so, 14th birthday party, I went, like, you know, we had it at, um, Round Table Pizza in Medford. Um, back before they moved over by Tintin Buffet, it was back when they were, like, you know, um, by Safeway, where Punky's Diner is. And welcome to part 17 of False Bulls Forgets You Don't Live in Medford and Probably Doesn't Know Any of This Information. That's okay, fam, I got you. Anyway, so I invited, like, a bunch of... Well, I had, like, five friends in middle school because, like, I was an antisocial fuck. But, like, I invited, like, you know, like, the five. I think that, I don't think I invited any girls to my birthday party. And I don't know why. I guess I just didn't really have that many female, like, close female friends that I would actually, like, want to invite to stuff. Like, I had, like, a friend group I hung out with. But, honestly, I was never really close to them. I mostly just, like, orbited them from, like, you know, elementary and middle school. And eventually when I got to high school, I started hanging out with, like, a different group of friends. But that's not the point. So I invited, like, a bunch of people whose faces I vaguely remember, but I don't remember the names of any of them. Which is sad. Like, I did not keep any of those friendships going into high school. And some of them, like, you know, it was, it was middle school, so, like, some of the friendships you make, like, you're, you're happy to get rid of because, like, they turn out to be a dick, but, yeah. So I got a round table pizza, which is one of my favorite pizza shops in Medford. It was, like, one of the ones I loved going to as a kid because... Oftentimes, like, my dad would go there to, like, watch football games, and so he would, like, you know, take me there as well, and it would be like, I don't like televised football, but I like eating pizza, so it works out for me, because I'm a fucking glutton, and they have a pizza bar. So, we, like, you know, my, my parents order this, like, you know, they, like, reserve the tables, and they, like, get pizza, and they, like, saved, and they got, like, a bunch of money in quarters, because there was an arcade there, and so we, like, you know, were... That's, like, such a... Like, that's probably, like, the best birthday party I ever had. I know it's, like, the most memorable, but it's, like, also the best one. And so... 
Yeah, and so, like, we were playing, like, you know, arcade games all night. Like, um, yeah, I think, like, a couple of my friends, like, had to leave early, but, like, it was okay. Like, and a few of them didn't even show up, which, that's fine, too. But, um, I think I had, like, two or three people show up, and, oh, I don't remember his name, and I feel so bad about this. Like, you know, it was, like, such a fun memory. But one of my friends and I, like, we were playing, um, I think I was a church friend, actually, if I remember correctly. We were playing Con Evil, which, if you have never played, it is a, like, sort of 2000s cabinet game, and it's an FPS. And the whole point of it is that, like, you know, you find, like, this weird coin, and you shove it in a gravestone, because plot, and then all of a sudden, it's a freaky carnival that came out of a cemetery. You know how it is. Carnivals are always sexy when they're in the middle of a bone garden. Just how it is. And so you basically have to shoot your way through, like, these just twisty turvy landscapes. All of these, like, circus extractions, like... And if you survive, like, you know, you survive. And the game is... It's, like, you know, just one of those, like, sort of, like, generic-ish FPSs that, like, were really big and, like, you know, um... I guess cabinet games, like, you know, at that time period... And so, it's very schlocky, it's very camp, if we're being honest, but it is good fun. And I actually found another version of it in college at the arcade in Coos Bay, and I think I've beaten it, like, twice afterwards. But this was the first time I ever, like, beat the game. And so, we spent a good $40 in quarters, um... <laughs> playing that game. But we finally beat it, we finally beat that game. All four stages of it. And it was just, it was so much fun. Like, I was never, like, the biggest of the FPSs, but I literally just, like, had the time of my life, like, you know, playing that arcade game. I get home and, like, you know, I was put on pizza. And I th I'm sure it was, like, cake or something because it was a birthday party. But my, and I got, like, you know, play with, like, some of the like, presents that my parents got me. That year they got me, like, so I had, like, you know, the funnest, funnest time. Like, and I loved the birthday presents I got that year. And so, the three that I remember was, um, my parents bought me this book of, like, paranormal investigator ghost stories. So, it was about, like, um, these people who lived in, like, New England somewhere, and they were, like, you know, paranormal investigators. If you read my, um, blog, you might know I'm obsessed with the Black Tapes, which is a podcast very similar to that idea. But pretty much, like, you know, it was just sort of, like, my first taste of, like, you know, because I loved ghost stories, I loved horror, and so it was just exactly my aesthetic, and I, and I loved the book. I um, actually found and reread it a um, couple, I think, years or months ago, I can't remember exactly when, but I found it, like, you know, like, you know, later, and I reread it, and it was still good, but it definitely was much more impactful when I read it as a kid. Um, what also my parents bought me was a DVD player. Now, I'm not talking about, like, you know, a VCR, DVD, like, you know, combo set that you can into your telly. I'm talking about, like, you know, one of those portable DVD ones that you go for, that you use for camping. One of my cousins actually owned one, and I thought it was so cool. And my parents, like, you know, sprung for it. And we used it for, like, years. Like, my parents also used it, but, like, I used it for quite a bit as well. And so, like, you know, and so we would, like, you know, have DVDs, and we would pop them in, and we would, like, you know, watch them, and it would be, like, a little portable, like, you know, one that's just for playing movies, or, like, whatever you have. And uh, it was, like, it was, like, the coolest thing, like, way back when. I'm sure, like, you know, the young kids these days wouldn't really understand why it was so cool, because we have, like, you know, this was years before, like, you know... YouTube Red and, like, you know, Amazon Prime was, like, you know, streaming movies. This was way back when, when, like, Netflix was not even online. We, like, got into, like, Blockbuster was still around. Netflix was only doing DVDs. So you would order them online and they would send them to you. Honestly, I kind of miss that, like, era of Netflix because they had, like, just a really bigger selection and you could get a lot of, like... Much more, like, rarer stuff with it. Because they were, like, focusing on, like, you know, the physical copies of things. Uh, so I'm, like, you know, getting off into, like, nostalgia land. But basically it was so awesome. And the third gift, if you, because you were paying attention, was a DVD, of course. So that I could actually use the DVD player. And it was, um, The Burbs with... 
Oh, who was it? Tom Hanks? I have no idea. But, like, the Burbs was just this... Basically, it's, like, sort of, like, weird window situation where this guy is, like... He moves into, like, the suburbs, and he's, like, looking over at his neighbors, and he's like, Are my neighbors serial killers? I think my neighbors are serial killers. And so he's like, I'm going to go prove that my neighbors, like, murder people and then burn them in the furnace in the basement. And so he goes, goes and does that. And it's really, like, this horror comedy type thing, because I remember there being, like, a lot of humor to it. But it was also, like, this very weird, like, gothic suburban, like, you know, horror movie. And there's, like, all of, like, these nightmare sequences and, like, all of this, like, other weird stuff that... It was just, it was so much fun. It was like this campy horror film and I loved it. Like, it was so funny. And I remember myself being like a bit of a wuss when I was a kid. Like, I was like always like, oh my goodness, all the scary things. Like, first time watching American Horror Story, I'm just like, oh no, they're going to get murdered. No, I'm just like, that's what you call a murder scene. That's obviously corn syrup. What can you fucking, like, props? But, um... Yeah, it was just, it was such a fun day that I had. Like, you know, I got to spend time with friends. I had, like, so much fun. And I just, I loved all of the gifts that my parents got me because they were, like, really meaningful and they were just amazing. And I really, like, looking back at it, like, answering all of these questions, I can really appreciate, like, you know, how much, like, my parents tried to have, like, make, <laughs> ah, how much my parents, like, even worked to make sure that I had really good birthdays. Even though, like, you know, a lot of the times we might not have always been, like, the best situations. And that's really nice. So I'm glad that, like, looking back, I can see, I can, like, you know, appreciate all the things that people do for me in my life. So, last question, one that is horribly less maudlin, is what is your favorite flavor of ice cream? Oh my goodness. And so, when I was working at Walmart, I found out that people are burning as shit and can't answer this off the top of their head. And that's a bitch move. I'm sorry, it's like. I can, like, I'm not going to, like, you know, judge somebody for liking chocolate. I'm going to a little, but at least I can understand that. Chocolate is good. But then there's, like, you know, people out there who are like, Oh my goodness, I don't know. Or, uh, I like them all. No shit, bitch, it's ice cream. Everyone likes ice cream. You're not quirky or special because you're bad at decisions. But enough shaming people for being bad at answering impromptu questions by the cashier at Walmart. My favorite flavor of ice cream is, of course, Bordeaux Cherry made by Encore Ice Cream. I just, I really love it. I've come to realize that cherry is one of my favorite flu- 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 Favorite flu- Favorite fruit flavors. So that ten times fast. <laughs> and so, yeah, it's my absolute favorite. I've tried other dark cherry flavors, such as um, Cherry Jubilee from Bastard and Robbins, and it just doesn't hold a candle. And so, Encore with Bordeaux Cherry is probably my favorite. I like to get it from, like, you know, the places that actually sell it, which are mostly just um, Food for Lust's snack shop in Medford. But there are a few other places that are legally allowed to sell Encore. It's just, they don't let the many people do it. Because, like, you know, it's all about quality. I like to get it, what I'm saying is I like to get it from the five gallon buckets because I tend to think that those have a bit more cherries in them than the quartz you buy. But I might just be like seeing having a sample bias there. Anyway guys, I realize that if you don't live in the state, in the states, if you don't live in Oregon specifically, you might never heard of Amqua um, ice cream. They're essentially one of the big dairy producers in Oregon. So there are, we have quite a number of, like, you know, local creameries in the area. But the main two that people really enjoy is Tillamook, which is up north in the Dales. And we have Amqua, which is over here, like, you know, in the Jackson area. In, like, southern Oregon. And so that's sort of, like, you know, the two cheese brands that we see from here. Basically, Wisconsin can suck a dick because they haven't had Tillamook cheddar. That's all you need to know about Oregon, like, you know, dairy products. And yeah, like, Bordeaux Cherry, I'm called, that's my favorite, favorite ice cream. I love it to bits. All other, like, you know, flavors can suck a dick. <laughs> um, wow. Well, sorry, guys. I kind of, like, got off topic there, but this is, like, just the completion of the birthday tag. I've never really, like, you know, done a tag before, so hopefully you had fun with it. 
I had fun making this. I, like, you know, like I said, never made one before. So, I was thinking, okay, I gotta pick a topic. I gotta, like, you know, ask a bunch of, like, you know, smart people questions that, like, elicit responses. And so, that was always something cool. I love, like, trying something different. Trying to, like, make something new when it comes to vlogging. And so, I thought it was really awesome that I could have, like, you know, just experimented. I love to experiment with my channel. I love to try new things. And hopefully, you enjoy the ride. Anyway, guys, as always, you can do, like, three different things to help me out. You can like this video, because it lets me know if I'm doing good, if you like this content. And I can also let YouTube know that, of course, I'm that bad bitch who needs all the love and affection. You can comment, um, if you want. You know, you can always just comment to any of the, like, nine questions I asked today. Or just tell me what you thought about the video. Um, what your, like, you know, any of that type of stuff. And, of course, like, you know text suggestions because I'm a potato child who can't walk a fucking camera. And of course, you can always share this video. If you have a friend out there who wants to hear some guy talk about his like um, 14th birthday for like 15,000 minutes, I'm your bitch. Like, send him this way. But also, because this is a tag video, maybe you could like, you know, send it to another friend of yours who is a vlogger or a YouTuber. Maybe somebody on their birthday and have them do a birthday tag. I don't know if there are other birthday tags out there. Because honestly, I suck at SEO and I didn't feel like doing research. But if you have a friend out there who is like, you know, looking for like, you know, some YouTube content to make. And they want to like, you know, have a little daisy chain about it. I'm your bitch. Like, I'm going to tag, because this is a tag video. I'm going to tag anyone who wants to like, do this fucking video. Because... Not just because I want those internet points. Not at all. Nope, nope. Just because I'm a nice guy. No, tag your friend. Do what you want. You know, live your life. Anyway, guys. I had a lot of fun today. And as always, this is False Bulls 123 and I'm signing off.